We've made a bunch of Formula One cars for BeamNG up until now. But in 1977, we saw the first turbo car. And that was it. Everyone switched to turbos. No. N no, they botched it. It was so catastrophically bad that everyone was nicknaming it the Yellow Teapot. After all, turbos were new technology, right? Not even close. We used to get superchargers, but they were regulated to be so much smaller. And because they were inefficient, everyone gave up on them by the 60s. And even though turbos came around in the 60s, they weren't really good. And we really only used to make more power, not make double the power. Now, they had to be half the capacity, so they had to make more than double the power for it to even be worth it. Hence why out of 30 races, only six were ones that they finished. Six! Now, to be fair, they were sandbagging, using these early years for development. Or so they say. It was only about 20 kilograms heavier. The more likely story? They were just garbage. So was the process of making this mod body. It was only one car, but it came with two different front ends, an open rear design, a closed rear design, a conventional wing, and whatever this thing was. Now, luckily making this thing is uh, not gonna be so hard. The convenient thing here is that this vehicle is a little bit heavier, which makes it easy because automation always calculates my cars to be way too heavy. Even still, we're gonna try to make it as light as possible. So here's the big rub. It is meant to be made of aluminium and a monocoque of aluminium, but there's no aluminium monocoque option yet. And even if it did have that as an option, it would still be way too heavy. So we're gonna make this version as is. Then we're gonna go back and we're gonna make one out of carbon fiber to get it a little bit lighter. Here's where it gets a little bit interesting though. This engine, even though it says sometimes it's meant to be made out of aluminium, it is in fact made out of cast iron to be able to take the massive amounts of boost pressure. They thought that was such a big issue back then. Also partly because they had aluminium and not ALSI at this point. And conveniently, everything is written down. We've got our born stroke here, but we can't get anywhere near to the shorter amount of stroke that we need. Uh... Well, we do have one last option, and that's to drop this down. Oh no, we still can't get low enough. Oh no! This thing has such an incredibly short stroke, so the pistons must be just moving like that. Like really big pistons, just moving like that. It's not gonna be particularly useful. Also, I can't get that low. What? I think this is the first time I've been unable to actually make the engine. Oh, that's bad. Well, really my only option then is to down this until we get the right size. And there you have it. Instead of 86 here and 42, we're gonna go with 79 and 50. Fortunately, that's as far as we could take it. I know this thing is meant to rev high, so we'll give it a high cam profile, some heavy lifters, increase the head quality a bit, add some turbo on there. Pretty sure it's also only one turbo at this point. I believe it also had a single intake throttle body, but I'm not entirely sure. We'll set this to performance high, turn this up to some sort of av gas sort of thing, increase the RPM, and then, oh, what sort of manifold do we go with? I can actually just see in there that looks tubular. I mean, I don't know why it wouldn't be, apart from the fact that these sorts of tubular exhausts would melt back in the day, and unfortunately the turbo is stuck off to one side and I can't mount it like back up here somewhere. Eh, whatever, I suppose. Now, the numbers we're aiming for is 373 kilowatts, which is only ever so slightly more than the other engines, at 11,000 RPM. Shouldn't be too hard. 11,000, oh dear god. We are way off the mark. I don't know if we're gonna be able to make the amount of power that we need. And before I've even made the turbos that big, the valve springs cannot hold the valves closed against boost pressure. Consider stiffening valve springs. I'm sorry, but they are maximum and the quality is max. Oh no! Right, maybe if I, yeah, all right. Reducing the cam profile helps a little bit without losing a lot of power. Ugh. Two thousand years later. I keep running into the pressure issue of the valve float. Uh, <laughs> Alright, absolutely maxed out the quality on the block and it seems to have uh, fixed the issue? Let's hope. And seemingly this is about as close as we can get. I cannot make this amount of power, which the power and torque numbers are pretty much on point at a higher RPM. The valves just do not handle it. I mean, it's not a very big turbo, but uh, I mean, it just, it, 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 you get valve float all the time. If I increase the pressure, boom goes the dynamite. The temperature of the turbine has exceeded safe limits. I don't care. The car was meant to be destroyed. As for the valve cover, it's meant to be like a, a fairly decent kind of blue. I think that's as close as we're gonna get on that one. 
I've been working at this for a little while now. But what I can see of the rest of the engine, it just looks pretty much metal colored. So we can leave that as is. Well, I suppose let's listen to it. Oh, you can see that boost like boom on. Off. Nothing on. Oh, look at those exhaust manifolds. It's just burning up. That is crazy to look at. And also very incredibly loud. Ah. Let's move on. As you can see, the body has the minimum drag limits that are, for some reason, the developers put into this and the default minimum lift coefficients as well. Great. Let's just ignore that for now. And the chassis. Oh, that does actually look pretty cool so far. Manual gearbox, probably something like a five speed, even though here it says six speed. Uh, sure, five in a reverse, that's six, right? Anyway, open differential most likely. And here's the big kicker. This was the first Formula One car and one of the first ever race cars to use radials, finally! Yeah, so they're a French car company and Michelin was a French tire manufacturer. Michelin had been pushing their radial technology since they uh, started to adapt it and use it more widely in, I think it was the 40s or something like that. And they've been making it into road tires. People weren't transitioning quickly enough and they really wanted the transition to happen. So in the late 70s is when they finally made the switch to racing. And I'm assuming the rear tires are big and the front tires are less big. Unfortunately, the information is a little bit vague. We got wheels, but that's not tires per se. So for the fronts, we got 11.5. That's two nine twos. That's not right. Let's give a try measuring it here. The width of the tread itself on the front looks to be about 262. So let's change that down to 260. And the rear tread seems to be around 360. I feel as if that's incorrect. So we'll stick with it for now. Let's now look at diameter of tires, which is about 720. That's not too hard. And if we hide the body here. This on the front is 540 maybe? Yeah, 540 will do. And that is considerably smaller than the rear. There we go. Yeah, that is a massive difference. Oh God. Same old brakes as always, maximum size, even though they would be bigger than what is available. Mostly due to the fact that all of the brakes were often inboard and not out on unsprung weight on the wheels. We'll go with a semi-clad. I mean, they were getting better at downforce, so we'll leave that as is. The brake airflow we can bring up. A single seat. We don't need any seats on the front. No entertainment and high quality on that to reduce the weight. No power steering, no safety. Please don't need any any of that garbage. This is the 70s, baby. A standard spring, gas monotube, and we'll set this to race. Now here comes the big challenge. You'd see this is showing a lot of oversteer. We have to now put on downforce on the rear. First things first, let's uh, address the elephant in the room. This engine should be all the way up here. I would use this slider here, but that lies still. Months later, it still is a lie. So instead we're going to use this one, which won't uh, corrupt our data because this doesn't affect automation's graphs, which means it'll be accurate when we get to BMNG. So for now, we're just gonna move that forward. Maybe scale it up just a little bit. And then I think raise the position just a tad. Nice. Then the real crux of what we're gonna do, and that's add in wings. And to make things easier, I've made the side plates in my default. Put you in place, hide this little rear lip thing, which is meant to make more downforce in the olden days, which to be honest, it was more like just adding more drag, make it super thick like wings were back in the day, and then add the real downforce adding wing on back here and put you in place about there. And that's how wings basically were. And yes, it did protrude a little bit at the front. D don't ask me why. Then because this, even though it was really more of an air dam to get air over the tires to reduce drag by speed, we are gonna put a little bit of a wing on here because this would have made at least a smidgen of downforce. We'll just hide you in there for now. And aerodynamics say, still oversteer, god damn it. Well, we got that front wing in there. We don't need actually to add a lot of downforce to that, except for the fact we're still generating lift here. Oh dear God, all right. Let's drop our front tire width down maybe just a smidge. And unfortunately we're still showing lots of oversteer. God damn it. What would our handling do if we changed the weight distribution to the front? That would actually fix our oversteer issue. Fix that oversteer issue. And that I know how to change easily in J-Beam. Here's hoping that it's actually that simple. Now we're about 
400 kilos heavier than what we need to be. Let's go ahead and raise the quality of everything to get that weight down. And we're still 857 kilograms, which means we're still about 200 and something kilograms more than what we need to be. Will going to fiberglass make us light enough? No. What about a space frame? No, that's heavier. So instead, we're going to cheat and we're going to make the year newer. Right up until we can get glued aluminium monocoque. But even then, we're still way overweight. So instead, yes, we are going to go with carbon fibre. And wouldn't you know it, we still can't get light enough. Oh my god, we're still 100 kilos over. Automation devs, please. Please give me some sort of like extra things I could do when mod making to make like a weight change slider sort of thing and um, allow me to have the engine by default further forwards, which I've tried to do, but every single time I do it, the engine just goes, nope, doesn't fit. <laughs> As you can see, it's about 106 kilograms heavier than what it needs to be. <laughs> Screw it. Let's just move on to the things that I can make look pretty. And now I can show you the paint jobs that you can do. You've got the primary color, which is yellow. Then you can change the secondary color, which is black. Oh, it looks so good. Except if you look directly straight on, you can kind of see a little bit of a point there, but just ignore that. <laughs> Pretend I did a good job, please. Then you've got the very back part here. If you want to, you can paint it invisible, but we're gonna make it body colored for now. Then as for trim, you can also change the cockpit inside color. I think I did a pretty fancy job. What sort of wheels does it have? Wikipedia is showing, I think an eight spoke wheel. Also three part wheels, cause you got the bolts in here. And from this angle, Wikipedia is showing that the wheel is actually instead a blur. Great. All right, let's take this honestly. I don't think I'm gonna find a multi-part center lock six spoke wheel. But I suppose we can give it a try. Nothing there, nothing there, nothing there, or there, there, probably not in here. We've got this, which is close. That's actually quite close, except for the fact that it looks like a truck wheel and none of the rest work. Nothing here, here, or here. And as for the very last one, yeah, nah, nothing there. Now I've got all these mods to go through. Eh. Well, now that we've gotten close enough on that, let's start doing the big things. One, let's fix that rake on that suspension that we've got going. Looks good enough. Now for the back body part, which is going to mostly house just a really big intercooler. Like, really, really big intercooler. So if you have a look at the dimensions here, it really looks as if it fits very close up to the rear tire and the engine does come up quite a bit above it. So let's also increase the engine height and maybe just the size just a tad. There, that's looking decent. Now we gotta make this a fat intercooler because these were fat. I, I mean, it wasn't really an intercooler. This was a radiator here, but you get the idea. And then cover it up with like black edging because unfortunately there's no color choice here. We we'll use this little bad boy, stretch you out, noise. You may also notice that I'm not putting in ground effect. Yeah, this car came at the wrong time. Right as ground effect was coming in, they were trying to push their new technology that just wasn't cutting it, really. I mean, they did okay for never finishing. Now, looking rather closely at this, there is a scoop that goes in on the side and I'm kind of wishing right about now that I had have actually put that scoop in the model. Unfortunately, I didn't. So can we maybe work with this kind of scoop? Uh, ooh, this is tricky. Let's try this. Yeah, all right. I, I'm happy that I didn't put that in. Oh, not happy, but like, uh, now more accepting of the fact that I decided to not put that in like some sort of numpty. I also realized that a better manifold look is to have individual throttle bodies, even though it wasn't. That has also allowed me to get a closer power band to what we should expect. All's well that ends well, right? Then a big 15 on the front. Looks fairly decent to me. Then some white stripes down the side, I think. Ooh, that looks nice. I mean, kind of. As long as you only look at it from this angle, and like right about that sort of zoom. And they got some on the front as well, but ugh, all that extra effort just to do it there as well. The problem is, is it all comes to triangle. So yeah, probably not gonna do that one. Yeah, doing that would just be a complete waste of time. E uh, um, I didn't just spend an hour doing that. No, not at all. Now we got these weird nostril sort of things. What is that? I'm unclear. I mean, they don't really look like knacker ducks or anything. I suppose what I could use is one of these, I think. Kind of 
make those the right size and kind of plop them in the middle. I, just, I can't tell. I don't know what I'm looking at here. So sure, we'll go with it. As I always say, near enough is good enough. Yay. Extra little doodads. Looks like we got some sort of tap here and a fart tube. I don't know. We could stick one of these in here maybe. And then for the little tap thing, it was inside of a notch cut out. We could stick some sort of bolt in there maybe. Hopefully well, that'll do, I think. Annoyingly, there's not really many rear shots of this uh, open rear design version of the car. So we're gonna have to work from this angle. And this is the wrong sort of wing as well. I think I might go into the 3D modeling program and move the turbo into the correct place. But for the rest of it, we're just gonna build up a suspension and transmission sort of housing and go from there, I suppose. So let's start using these parts because they look the correct sort of thing. And you know what? They just look good. Okay, well, I've just decided instead to place the fake uh, 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 fake turbo housing and whatnot here. It is a hexagonal shape. It's got this coming out of one side and some exhaust pipe going in the other side. I think we're all good there. God, it's so hard to see anything in here. It's packed so tight. I think we'll run just a straight exhaust pipe out the rear. This is the wrong sort of rear. It's got the uh, wing on there, but it does come up at a 30 degree angle. Oh, this is... I atrocious. Here we go. We've got an actual rear end picture. Oh, thank God. Finally. This is not what looks to be mostly a mock-up, but I, I can run with it. Got, yep, same sort of exhaust with a weird thing on it. All right. I think this is all good. Looks much better on the front than it does on the rear, but uh, whatever, we'll go with it. So let's just give it a bit of a test drive. See that it does all right and let's send it over. Uh, also, I want to point out that I fixed Renault's name. Now it's spelt the way it sounds. Woo, yeah! I hate the French's influence on English. Okay, first things first, collision mesh. You know what? It's not the worst one I've seen, but I will be fixing this at some point. Let's give it a bit of a drive first. See how bad that oversteer graph was. Oh my God. Oh, that's right. The gear ratios are always wrong. I completely forgot about that. Well, we'll see how it drives before we go in and fix the gear ratios. Wait, hold on, no, the gear ratio should have been fine. Why is it, oh, the gear ratios are just bad. It shouldn't be this bad, that's weird. What is this black thing here? Oh, that's the intake? Mmm, I'll, I'll probably make that invisible. Ugh. Anyway, back to driving. And you know what? It's actually handling all right, even though it's, oh, prone to oversteer. Oh, come on, please, please, please. There we go. Did I accidentally make the first gear way too long? What is happening here? Look at this thing go. And then power on at nine and a half thousand RPM. This gear ratio needs to be much longer. Oh, you know what it was? I think it was because that the gear ratio in between area is not really that awesome. But let's see how we uh, do handling at speed. 260 kilometers an hour now which is kind of the sorts of speeds you'd expect to see out of these things. A little bit of understeer. You know what? It's actually pretty good. This thing, they said it was going to oversteer like crazy. Oh, oh, God, no. But it's not oversteering. It is broken. <laughs> it's not oversteering. Oh, no. All right, let's try Bavarian Bend again. This time, a little less lock up -y. And you know what? It's doing all right. Now power it out of here. Going nearly 200 kilometers an hour in second gear. This gear ratio is way too long. Oh God, the lockups are bad. The lockups are really bad. Nah, that's fine. We got it. Look at that. We're all good. Oh dear. <laughs> well, we can still, okay. Yeah, I need to change this uh, gearbox ratio. All right. Well, one last try. Oh God, the brakes are way too good. Try one last time around here. You know what, actually, going somewhere around 90 kilometers an hour around Adam's apex, pretty good. But we're gonna fix a few different things. One, I forgot to put a number there. Two, we're gonna turn this invisible. Three, this is meant to be aluminium colored. Four, gearbox, very much so. We probably only need to go around 300 at most. And then, as you can see, the drop off is massive. I'm thinking I know why they have, oh, six speed, yes, good. I set the year to, year to newer. I forgot that I could have a better gearbox. That's good. Let's paint that air intake area to be aluminium colored, much better. Except it goes back to its regular color. Hopefully that'll fix itself. Then mirror that. What's that, three things? What am I missing? Oh yes, air intake. Let's go 
hide engine intake. Oh no, that's made everything invisible. That's a bad, oh, that's, ugh. Um, I don't like that. You know what? We'll just delete that somewhere else somehow. Send it back and it's looking a little bit better. Apart from the front, which is munted because of the collision mesh, but we'll get around to fixing that later. How does it go now with a better gearbox? Oh, look at that, I can actually do a burnout. And gears still kind of suck because the power comes on way too late with the boost. I should probably turn the collision mesh off. Give me a sec, there we go, good, okay. And full powered on. <sighs> well, I took that time to go ahead and fix a few different things. One, we made the suspension custom. Two, we fixed the collision mesh, so everything's all nice and happy. Three, I went back and realized that after I moved the engine nodes forward, the thing was under steering way too much, so I made the front tires wider in automation and plopped them in. You know, all the basic stuff. Wait, hold on. Um, uh, give me a second. <laughs> you know, all the basic stuff. I'm gonna get back in the racing rig now. So now we're gonna go ahead and do ourselves a bit of a hot lap. Now, let me start off by saying, yes, I did forget to put in the jiggle fix before this uh, started. I will be giving you an updated version where that will be in my default so you won't have to live through quite such a bad time. But let's go on to the car itself. And oh my God, the tires are so good. Look at this, like, braking so much smoother turn in so smooth and then coming i'm gonna do the switch back and then power on i am so pussyfooting it and that and also the fact that i'm always in the wrong gear this thing is just so good and then coming down through the tight and twisty areas this is always a bit of a problem now i did lock up there but that was a me thing not the car thing and it's just so clean so smooth look at this now here's the power on look at that uh, you switch gears and then it takes a little bit of time for the turbo to kick in let me just pause quickly now here we have the car going around it stops up the beginning of the corner and it's going to slot in behind these ferraris and you're going to see that it's going to be there for quite some time behind these ferraris because the ferraris got the earlier and the better start but will that affect anything? No, look at the power of this thing. It just takes so long for it to actually come into effect. Now it also probably doesn't have ground effect as much as a Ferrari. But back to your regular scheduling, the tires on this are also so good. Now braking, it gets a little bit sketchy coming over the wires because we don't have the massive down to, downed? ground effect of the uh, previous Lotus that we made that finally had a car that had decent ground effect. This does really hold its own though. Like, look how smooth this is going through the corners. The power delivery is not the worst. It's not really great either, but it does have the power in the right places. I, sh you know what, actually no, it, it has the power all in one lump sum. You have to be in the right gear. And I did end up constantly selecting the wrong gear. And here we go, coming up to the final corner now and put that turbo engine to use. You can see how like no power and then just the thing goes way too fast. And holy cow, I have done practically no practice with this vehicle. Literally just having the radial tires as opposed to crossfly, I think is making this a million times better as a vehicle. Like sure, it still oversteers a little bit and sometimes with the power on and then it'll understeer it pretty much every chance it wants to. This thing is fast. Now, I also tried to make the engine weaker, but for some reason, this thing just doesn't want to blow. I don't understand why. Why won't you blow? Oh, uh, well, I, I'll probably figure something out with that. I also just realized if I go into control W, yep, I forgot to put on the jiggle fix. Ah, I probably could do it even faster lap. In fact, actually, I'm going to do that right now. Don't worry, I'm not going to subject you to the entire lap again, but just look how much smoother this is. Even when in fast forward, this thing is doing a phenomenal job of just being really cool. Oh, that's practically the same time. Wow, not only is this thing fast, but my God, it's consistent. Ha, oh, ha, oh, all I needed was better dice and the things are better. I mean, sure, I'm getting better at making cars as time goes on, but whoa, 
This is great! Oh my god. All right, this will be up on the BMG repository for you to try. For now, I'm gonna try a different track because I just, I wanna drive this thing. It is so good and so much fun. Before we go to do that though, I'm gonna interject ever so quickly and just point out that even though it was a second and a bit faster, very similar sort of time, it was able to push itself up into third place. And I do feel I could probably knock off maybe another second or two and you know what i think i'm gonna take it here to west coast usa now i just want to say that i loved driving this thing so goddamn much and part of the reason the why this video is going up just a smidgen late today well that's because i should have started editing sooner edit editing sooner but I was just, I was driving this car around. Even after I stopped recording, I was driving it around because it felt so nice to have a car that wasn't a complete nightmare because of the atrocious tires that were on it. But let's go and actually pay attention to what was happening in front of us. You can brake relatively late. I could have probably tuned the brakes to be a little bit better, but they were functional and I was just so ready to get on to actually driving this vehicle. And then going around here at a decent speed, we're only generating like about 300-ish uh, kilograms of downforce, maybe 400. Not the most downforce sort of car, but sort of what was indicative of this time right before the tons of downforce that started with the uh, incoming era that still was started by the Lotus of the other one. Now this one, yes, did start its own uh, sort of era with turbo engines for a while until they got banned so we only had them for about 10 years up until uh what would it be like 2015 or something like that? i can't remember when did they start doing turbo engines again in formula one i i might i'm atrocious at remembering those sorts of things look how smooth that was through the corkscrew and now coming up to the final chicane a little bit of jiggle there um, maybe i did or i'm not sure if i put the jiggle fix in and then power down to the end here and this is actually going to give me a really good time compared to normal cars you know not a bad time this thing is goddamn fun oh that's right we don't have jiggle fix on Oh god, I should really probably make that a standard feature in the car so then when you get into it and try it out yourself, you'll be able to know what I mean. Guys, this has been a real blast. This is actually probably the first F1 car I've made where I'm actually happy with how it handles. It's like a dream come true. Oh wait, hold on, hold on. It's like a dream come true. Well, anyway, I hope you have enjoyed today's video. If you do like this sort of stuff, hit the like button, subscribe, all that. But for now, I'll catch you all next time. Mm, goodbye. Oh, yeah. Special thanks.